Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, my name is Josh Nipes. Before we get started, make sure to click the Discord link in my description. If you have any questions or anything like that about this video or anything else Siege related or just have questions for me about YouTube or anything like that, you can ask it down in the Discord. Now, without further ado, this is going to be How to Play an Operator. Now, How to Play an Operator is a series I start with, How to Play Hibana, and I plan to carry out through all the operators. Now, if there's any big changes or nerfs or buffs, I plan to either comment or just give you some notification that there was a big change that was made now this series is how to play an operator within a team environment and how to play with your team and the role that you fill on that team as a character now these views are subjected to what I've seen on pro league challenger league go for and other competitive play also this will help you whether you're solo queuing or running in a five stack now remember that different regions have different play styles and individual players have personal preferences but overall this is how I think you should play the operator now without further ado let's figure out how to play maestro so, Maestro joined us in Operation Parabellum back in Year 3 Season 2. That feels like a while ago, and it really is, but he sort of changed how you played sites and what your options were as far as if a pick and ban went through and they banned out Echo. You can actually play him now on the site, although we'll get into his gadget and all of that in just a little bit. He joined us, though, with Alibi, and I gotta say, he's probably one of the most interesting operators that I have ever gotten to play his Alda is really really good and his gadget in general just is very useful now if you've never seen an evil eye in game before basically what it is is it's this ball that is bulletproof and it sits on a wall you place it like you would place a bulletproof camera you can place it on the wall you can place it on the floor so that gives you a lot of options in terms of where you can actually put it and how you can use it you do have to be weary though there was an update that nerfed his gadget well basically an EMP or Twitch's drone can open it and then Twitch's drone can shock it but with an EMP from Thatcher someone else has to follow it up and shoot it it can get killed by any explosive so a grenade Zofia ash charge anything that pretty much could take down a softball you can take down that also so just be wary of that when you place them but with that being said though the bulletproof camera is thermal so you can actually see through smoke when someone decides to go on and plant and it does quite a bit of damage I guess for what it is now you can shock any gadgets you can shock people and you can actually kill people it does a five damage per shot at a rate of about four shots per second so if you can imagine you're in the dying seconds of the round you don't exactly have the time to stand up and shoot it so you want to make sure your teammates are either watching over you or just you're able to call out early on and get rid of it early on but if you're on the defending side, there are some ways to get around, say, the EMP and the Twitch drone. You can't get around any sort of soft breach that might destroy it. Now, this isn't really a tip or trick. It's more just so, just so you know. But I'm just going to demonstrate it right here. Literally, all you need to do to avoid it, and this is assuming you don't place it on the ground. Say if you place it on a wall that's about head height or even chest height, basically what you want to do is you just want to aim up. Because if you aim up when the EMP or Twitch drone shocks it, it only opens the glass. It's not going to reset it and make it face forward. So it can't get shot. So if you put your evil eye down and you're not, it says at the beginning of the round or it's in the prep phase and you're putting it down, just aim it up. So that way if someone has a Twitch drone, they don't end up killing it really early on. Because losing Maestro cams that early is a real detriment to your team. And again, I just want to reiterate, if you have a Maestro and Echo available, you can play both. A lot of teams will actually play both because they do fit different roles. And then that way, if one of them dies, you still have the other. But again, this is interchangeable with Echo for most compositions that you'll play. So he's a real anchor. He's a real hard anchor. And that Alda he has is a fantastic gun. And I'll definitely make sure to go over it in the loadout. But just be wary. Just know that if you end up getting Echo banned, say, in ranked, you can still play the maestro pretty much the same way. It's not the gadgets are obviously not the same, but you're going to play them pretty much in the same exact way. Sort of use it to watch over anyone trying to plant. So you might want to put this over a plant spot, default plant spot that you'll know about. And that's just pretty much what his role is and where he fits on a team. So, heading on over to the loadout, you have an Alda 556. Now, this is going to be a light machine gun, has a huge magazine capacity, and it honestly shoots like a laser. So, you can't ask for anything else because it's probably one of the better defender guns in the game. I really enjoy using it, and you the thing is, is it has such a large magazine capacity and it doesn't have very much recoil so you can take multiple gunfights at the same time you can just kill one after another after another and i've had multiple times where that has happened but taking a look at the acs 12 shotgun this is pretty much going to be an automatic shotgun if you're playing maestro i would say never use this gun 
there is some uses when you use it on alibi but where this is an alibi video so i'm not going to go over that but if you're using maestro just use the alda you'll trust me you don't need the that shotgun so looking at the secondaries you have the bailiff 410 and you have the kratos 357 now if you're going to be using maestro most of the time you're going to be doing some anchor play so you're probably going to have to use that bailiff 410 it's pretty much a shotgun pistol so that's why you don't need to use that primary shotgun you can make rotation holes you can open hatches you can make holes above sights anything that you need that you can do with a shotgun normally you can do it with that handgun honestly probably one of the most well-rounded characters on defense he pretty much has the whole shebang he can do everything the only thing is he is a three armor one speed so he is slow but when you can take as many fights as he can you are definitely in a world of trouble lastly he has two gadgets that you can choose from you have the barbed wire and a deployable shield now the deployable shield is usually my go-to because if you think about it like Echo also, you usually bring a deployable shield so you can hide behind it. That way you're safe on your cams from anyone trying to push you. That's what I usually bring, but I can honestly see why some people might bring barbed wire on him. But I'd say maybe 90% of the time if you're just playing ranked, I'd play on the deployable shield. A lot of times gadgets can come down to what your team needs slash what your team wants. So... That's what I, I would play a deployable shield as a default, and then if my team needs a bar wire, I will definitely switch over. So, now moving on to the tips and tricks, I really wanted to go over something that I've made a video about, and I'll link it down in the description, and I don't feel like, given the way that they nerfed them, this was pre-nerfed when they made the video, but now the way that they've nerfed Maestro's camps, it's not as useful, but it's still something fun to do in ranked, especially with the, when you play like a solo queue, and you play against other solo queuers, or even just not full-on like coordinated teams that are really high rank. A lot of teams don't drown out Maestro camps, especially if they're above, but basically what it is, is you're going to put the Maestro cam, say above a hatch or a reinforced wall, anywhere you can get above just anything that might get blown open. You can actually shock a thermite charge or Hibana charge or Hibana pellets and make sure that the hatches don't get open. This is really useful. You think of like clubhouse where the team might try to open the hatch to go into the basement. You can put it above that hatch and shoot down because you can aim pretty much straight down and shoot the Hibana pellets or shoot the, my, the thermite charge that might be there. So I'm definitely going to demonstrate this for you guys. I'm just going to pull a clip off of my old video, but it's pretty fun to do and I enjoy doing it every so often. I just don't normally do it anymore since the nerf. Also, another tip that I wanted to bring up, if your Maestro Cam, if you're shooting someone and let's say they start to turn around, your maestro cam takes a second to close those bulletproof windows that bulletproof doors whatever you want to call them in that time though someone can still shoot it but say someone's about to turn around to try and shoot your maestro cam if you actually turn your maestro cam while you're closing your windows you can actually prevent your maestro cam from getting shot this is it's kind of like playing a shield character and then so or like clash where you could 360 you take your shield off and you 360 it's kind of the same concept except you can't go all the way around on the maestro cam you basically turn away from the person you're shooting at and the rest of the cam is bulletproof so you don't need to worry about them shooting your cam while those doors close i think this is a pretty simple tip that i feel like a lot of people overlook because they just keep shooting and they just expect their maestro cam to get shot instead of trying to keep it alive so i would definitely be wary though and try to do this when you're playing now, another tip that I have is, honestly, it's one of those things that I feel like a lot of people that I've seen in ranked and just in comp in general, that might, they might overlook this. And it really, honestly, is just leave your cam in a good position. Now, what do I mean by that? Basically, if you die, your cam, you can't move it. You can only just look at it. So, if your cam's facing down or facing up or it's just not looking at something, it should be, say, it's looking too far to the right, too far to the left and you can't see everything, that's a problem. So you wanna try to pretty much, cause it has a pretty wide angle camera, so you wanna use that to your advantage. I would definitely, say if you're playing on border and you're overlooking sort of that armory take that people might do, there's a default spot that you have to overlook. So if you leave your cam facing that in the rest of the hallway, you can see a lot and gather a lot of information. But if you're looking down or looking too far to the left, you might not be able to see someone going down and trying to plant the bomb. So definitely make sure you leave your camp in good spots just in case you die because that does happen every so often. Lastly, the thing that I want to talk about, this should be pretty much obvious. Anyone that has a high capacity magazine, you can do this with, but especially, especially with Maestro. Pre-fire a lot and just honestly, 
don't don't be afraid to pre-fire if you see someone peek out they're probably gonna re-peek they might re-peek and crouch or re-peek and stand but pre-fire that spot that you think they're gonna go because in 90 percent of the time you're probably gonna get lucky because someone might get a little bit aggressive and peek into your pre-fire because they might think you're gonna stop shooting or they might think they know exactly where you are so if you pre-fire kind of that head level You'll probably hit them 90% of the time. A lot of times people might also wide peek, so just be wary of that. But pre-fire a lot with the Alda. It's an 80-round magazine, or I guess 81. So just pre-fire a ton. Anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this entire video. Let me know if you guys have any tips and tricks of your own for anyone else that might be watching this video because I know that there's always someone that is way smarter than I am that comes up with something that I haven't even thought of yet. Anyways, that's going to be the end of the video. Let me know who you would like to see next, and that's going to wrap things up for today. This is going to be Josh Snipes signing off. Located. Second floor. Four left. Diffuser located. Protect the bombs and disable the diffuser. Bomb diffusing devices.